Ready? Three, two, one. Oh, we love cake fishing. fishing. Woo! You don't typically think of New Mexico when it comes to planning a ski trip, but Taos Ski Valley has been a destination player for quite a long time. Despite being just 400 miles from the southern border, the resort has long attracted visitors looking for alternatives to much better known resorts in Colorado and Utah. So is Taos really comparable to its more northern Rockies competition? Or is it overhyped? In this video, we'll go through Taos's overall mountain experience, and then we'll go through how the resort stacks up in our overall rankings. If you find this information helpful, be sure to like this video and hit subscribe so you don't miss any of our content. And if you haven't already, be sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram, where you can follow along for exclusive, real-time takes on the mountains we visit. One place where Taos lives up to the hype is in its snow quality. Yeah, seriously. If you get there on a good day, prepare for the resort to upend your prior understanding Ooh. of north-south geography. Oh, yeah, that's nice. On a powder day, accumulation is supremely dry and light, with storms coming in and dropping off true fluff. If everything lines up, one might even mistake Taos's footprint for one in the cottonwoods. Taos's snow cover heavily depends on the resort aspects. Winds typically come from the southwest, and the best terrain often faces northeast thanks to windswept powder. But on days when it's not snowing, conditions are much more like what one might expect from a resort as far south as New Mexico. The resort is perennially sunny and can sometimes get above freezing, even during the course season. The mountain gets bare in between storms, with thin cover present across various elevations. Taos is a tough bet earlier in the season. The resort has excellent snow when it dumps, but it doesn't see nearly the same quantity as Colorado competitors. In fact, the resort often isn't truly good until late February or even early March. On the other hand, truly incredible storms can hit as late as early April. The resort does have limited snowmaking capabilities, which does help it maintain a reliable opening date, but the conditions are rarely worth the trek during what most guests would consider early season times. Taos is quite a unique resort, and the beauty becomes more apparent the higher you get. The mountain doesn't look that intimidating from the base, but a ride up the out-of-base lift one reveals the much wilder, strikingly tenuous footprint hidden behind. And while that lower mountain lift line may not look that bad from the base, it only seems that way because the bottom portion of the line is so steep it hides the upper sections of the mountain. Guests will want to hit Taos's high alpine ridge line for the best views of the resort. Those who make it up to this zone will be rewarded with stunning panoramic vistas of the lower mountain, surrounding mountain ranges, and dry, contrasting valley to the west. Taos's base village isn't the biggest out there, but it has a distinctive charm to it, feeling vibrant but not overly commercialized like many other resorts. At just under 1,200 skiable acres, Taos is notably smaller than most other Rockies destinations. Despite this, the resort boasts an impressive variety of terrain, as well as a very respectable vertical drop measuring over 3,000 feet when conditions allow. Taos is a much more regional destination than Colorado and Utah, with many guests visiting from Texas and other parts of New Mexico. Taos is not really for beginners or intermediates, although there is enough terrain to keep the mountain palatable for both ability levels. Most chairlifts offer about one or two green and blue trails each, and they're consistently well groomed. Lifts four and eight are best for less experienced guests, with a high concentration of lower difficulty trails than other areas. True first-timers can choose from two bunny hills near the base. There's also occasionally a terrain park zone served by the Lift 7 chair, but it isn't always set up, especially during the earlier and later weeks of the season. Taos really starts to become worth it for advanced level guests. Visitors will find a series of long, trying mogul runs, especially in lower mountain areas. The black trails served by Lift 1 are some of the lengthiest in the Rockies region and are sure to wear down even the most tenured of guests but visitors will really want to reach true expert proficiency to properly enjoy Taos. The resort is home to some of the steepest, most perilous inbounds terrain in North America, with high consequence lines, several of which hide serious obstacles such as rocks and tree stumps across all elevations. Chutes, cliffs, and cornices are commonplace. Some of these lines require significant straight lining or mandatory air to get down, and are probably only best attempted after a solid storm. Taos's entire upper ridge line is reserved for experts only, and a journey to the high alpine means a daunting trip down. A significant portion of Taos's expert terrain, 
including all ridge terrain not served by the Kachina chair, requires hiking to get to. The hike isn't too bad, however, taking 10 to 15 minutes up a modestly sloped path to reach key lines. Once at these non-lift service trails, guests will typically find the effort worth it. These lines boast much better snow retention than the rest of the resort, and if temperatures have been consistent, powder stashes can remain for days after a storm. However, Taos's toughest terrain is subject to incredibly variable opening schedules. Due to differences in snow aspect, the resort is almost never 100% open. The Kachina lift, which provides the only lift service to Taos's bowls, seems to be only open once in a blue moon, with his chair spinning just a handful of times each season, usually after the best snowstorms. Upper Mountain Bowl terrain is much more consistently open via hiking, but if it's been a few days since the last storm, the hike may not be worth it. Part of Taos's terrain unreliability can be attributed to significant avalanche danger. The mountain's steep slopes are quite prone to slides, and varying weather just adds to the risk. While the resort does have considerable avalanche control infrastructure, inbounds casualties have occurred in the past. Taos isn't exactly a luxury resort when it comes to on-site facilities, but lodges on the mountain are decent enough. For those who don't want to go all the way back to the main base, two on-mountain lodges with both indoor and outdoor seating, and occasional live music, can be found. There are also a handful of picnic benches scattered about the resort. Taos isn't too bad to get around either. In fact, it's one of the most intuitive destination mountains in the business. The resort's modestly sized footprint is on the narrower side, and there are only a handful of places one can end up in. The mountain is very forgiving, and if you make a wrong turn, it's typically pretty easy to get back to where you wanted to go. Every resort area features trails that lead back to the base, although the trail from the lift 4 pod is a bit flat and catwalky, especially on warmer days. The one meaningful difficulty involves getting to the Kachina chair. Reaching its lift line requires a short sidestep, but this is entirely by design, given the extremely tenuous nature of the terrain the lift serves. But a major Taos drawback is the overall lift infrastructure. Most lifts at Taos are slow, fixed grip quads, with a few doubles and triples thrown in. This means a day full of long lift rides, and not everyone will love that. However, Taos's out-of-base Lift 1 was upgraded to a detachable high-speed quad back in 2018, and it now provides faster access to some solid lower mountain terrain, as well as a speedier gateway to mid and upper mountain terrain. As a resort off the beaten path in a state not often known for its skiing, Taos doesn't always see the crowds of more popular destination regions. But while the resort isn't typically crowded, there are a few exceptions. The Kachina lift is a rare treat when it's open, and just about everyone at the resort knows this, with the chair facing extraordinary weights on the days it's spinning. In addition, Lift 1 provides the only route out of the base village, and modest lines can build up in the morning. That said, other chairlifts rarely see any lines at all. Taos is within driving distance of both of New Mexico's largest cities, Santa Fe and Albuquerque. The resort is about two hours from the former and three hours from the latter. For most destination visitors, flights from the Santa Fe airport will probably make the most sense. The ski area is also about a five-hour drive from Denver. While it is somewhat pricey, Taos actually offers half-decent non-stop flights from select southwest cities through its self-run Taos Air service. Taos Ski Valley offers various upscale lodging options in its modestly sized but charming base village. Accommodations range from inns with spas and hot tubs to ski-in, ski-out condo rentals. There are also a handful of accommodations at the base of Lift 4. These stays are not cheap, but they're typically worth the price. Those looking for more economical lodging will find some options down about a half an hour from the resort in downtown Taos. The very cheapest options are pretty bargain basement, but there are a solid number of charming southwest rustic inns as well. Taos Ski Valley has a low-key but fun opera vibe in its base village. The resort often blasts live music in the afternoon, with village staying guests congregating below Lift 1 to pound back a few cold ones after a taxing day on the mountain. That being said, after the early evening, the valley significantly quiets down with non-existent nightlife. Downtown Taos has a walkable town and slightly more lively nightlife than Taos Ski Valley, but it's nothing too crazy and things typically quiet down by midnight, even on weekends and holidays. So Taos isn't the biggest or most consistent resort out there, and its lifts could be a bit more modern. The resort is certainly not a one-to-one -one substitute for a more conventional fly-to mountain, 
but if you're looking for something different on your next ski vacation and want to enjoy some of the toughest inbounds terrain the Rockies oh, has to offer, Taos right. may well be a solid choice. Lift tickets aren't cheap, especially at the ticket window, but if you buy in advance, they undercut bigger Rockies competitors by quite a bit. Taos is also on the Icon Pass, although for the 2023-24 season, it won't be offered on the base product. Snow droughts are always a risk at Taos, but as long as you're okay with the possibility of a powder surge turning into a sunbathing session, you won't be disappointed. Now let's go through how Taos stacks up in our overall rankings, which are determined by the following 10 category mountain score. Taos doesn't receive the same quantity of snow as its more northern competitors, but quality is top notch, earning the resort a surprisingly good score of 8 in this category. Resiliency, on the other hand, is not as impressive. Variable temperatures, fickle early season storms, and inconsistent expert terrain openings make the resort fairly unreliable, and the resort gets a 4 in this category. Taos boasts 1,183 skiable acres and 1,294 acres from boundary to boundary, making it smaller than a typical Rockies destination, and the resort gets a 5 for size. Taos does have a wide variety of terrain though, from tree-defined trails to glades to bowls, and earns a 7 for terrain diversity. Taos seems to have nearly everything when it comes to challenge, including steep, demanding bump runs, chutes, and cliffs. The only thing it's really missing is lift service terrain that requires mandatory straight lining or cliff drops, and the resort earns a 9 in this category. Taos has an out-of-base high-speed quad, but all its other lifts are slow, and the resort gets a 4 for lifts. Crowding isn't typically bad, but there are a few situations in which Taos can see lengthy waits, and the resort gets a 7 for crowd flow. Taos's mid-mountain lodges are pleasant and convenient enough, and the resort gets a 5 for facilities. Taos is a straightforward mountain to get around with little catwalking required, and the resort earns an 8 for navigation. And finally, mountain aesthetic. Taos may not be the most imposing mountain out there, but its upper mountain areas offer incredible, wide open views of the surrounding wilderness, and the resort earns an 8 in this category. These categories add up to an overall score of 65, placing Taos 31st in the Rockies and 40th overall. No. Taos is not going to provide a better quote-unquote overall experience than most of the Colorado and Utah destinations. But if you're looking for something different, and you really want to push your skiing or snowboarding ability to the brink, Taos is an incredibly fun time, assuming you get there when conditions are good. For more information on Taos and over 80 North American ski resort destinations, check out peakrankings.com. See you for the next one.